Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me on tonight's Egg Whisperer show. The topic of tonight's show is ovulation tracking with the Ava bracelet. And I'm so excited to introduce Lindsay Mizell. She's head of content from Ava, and we're gonna talk about fertility, you guys. Let's get started. Lindsay, tell me about yourself. Like what made you get get, into tracking fertility? Yeah, so I um, I was a writer. I worked in tech, um, and I also had a background in journalism. And I didn't know anything about fertility until um, I started working at Ava around, um, let's see, almost four years ago now. Um, but around the same time that I started, I also found out that I had something called hypothalamic amenorrhea, mm-hmm. which is where your period and your ovulation disappears because you're too healthy, or you exercise too much, or you like don't eat enough food. And so I learned through through my time at Ava and. And um, through learning more about that, how important it is to how important your menstrual cycle is to your overall health. Um, And I ended up gaining 15 pounds and I resumed um, cycling. And that kind of shaped the way I um, that made me think it was very important that all women, not just those who are trying to get pregnant, understand their menstrual cycles and have um, more literacy in that area. And I couldn't believe how um, how little I knew about it at one point, and um, this is really essential information. Yeah, so when you said cycling, I thought you meant like bike riding. Just kidding. Also um, into that, <laughs> but so, not too much anymore. So show me an Ava bracelet. Do you have one on? I do have Let's one see. on. Cool. Here okay. is my Ava bracelet. It's yeah. really nice. So how do we get one? Tell me about it. Um, so you can just order it at avawomen.com or on Amazon, um, and it will arrive at your door in a couple days. Ava Women. Why didn't you guys call it the Amy bracelet? Good question. Maybe I'll suggest that to our, our Let's product Let's set up the leadership, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And how much are you paying me to be on the show tonight to talk about the Ava bracelet? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everybody, she's not paying me anything. I just like to, t- like to talk about people that are just as crazy passionate about ovulation tracking and fertility as I am. So I'm so happy to have Lindsay on tonight's show. So let's talk a little bit more. You were like telling me a little bit about the bracelet and your experience. Tell me how exactly did you use it for yourself and what happened? Um, yeah, so I started wearing it um, before I was even trying to get pregnant, um, and I that gave me a good baseline of understanding, okay, what's a typical menstrual cycle look for me? When do I ovulate? How long is my luteal phase? What's normal for me? Then um, I started, I, I wore it to try to get pregnant. Um, I wore it for three cycles, got pregnant, had a miscarriage, um, then wore it for three more cycles and got pregnant and had a baby okay. eventually. And then did, like, what did the information tell you when you had the miscarriage? Did you still have the bracelet on? Um, yeah, I was, I was still wearing the bracelet and, um, I actually, looking back at that cycle, um, comparing my miscarriage cycle to my pregnancy cycle, they definitely looked very different. Um, in, in my pregnancy cycle, my heart rate and my temperature kind of at the end went around when I would have expected my period to come. They just didn't, those parameters didn't drop. They stayed up and, you know, they had some like ups and downs throughout my pregnancy, but they pretty much stayed much higher than my normal for my follicular phase. Um, in the miscarriage cycle, they went down kind of in the way, uh, they, they looked similar to as if I was just starting my next cycle. Got it. You're just using a lot of terminology that I want to make sure that our listeners understand follicular phase, luteal phase, break it down for me. Okay, follicular phase is um, the first half of your cycle. It starts on the first day of your period and it ends uh, when you ovulate. Cool. The, uh, the luteal phase starts right after you ovulate and it goes until your next cycle begins. And then how does the Ava watch tell you what's follicular and what's luteal? Um, so the Ava, Ava bracelet tells you, um, it, tell, it, it tracks every phase of your cycle. And so it tells you um, when your fertile window starts, mm-hmm. when you ovulate, um, and then by definition, that kind of shows you the two different phases of your cycle. The really unique thing about what Ava does compared to other um, methods of tracking ovulation is that it's, it's really designed to detect the beginning of your fertile window in real time. 
Um, and so your entire fertile window is six days long maximum. It might be a little shorter depending on, um, you know, personal factors so like, like your, how, what, the quality of your cervical mucus or your partner's sperm health or a bunch of other things. But you really have this maximum six day fertile window. Um, and if you're, if you're tracking ovulation with temperature or ovulation tests um, or just using the calendar method, you're not, you're probably not getting that entire six day window to, you know, see all the days to plan. And so Ava um, is able to tell you kind of as you're entering that six day window in real time. And when all that begins. stuff is so like 2010. I mean, this is like very 2019 and beyond as far as I'm concerned. Does Ava have like a brother bracelet, like the Kevin bracelet where <laughs> a man can wear it. And like when you're fertile, it'll like buzz the crap out of that man and be like foreplay starts this morning like be on your best behavior, do the dishes, do the laundry, take out the garbage and just always ask your wife, like, what can I do for you? How can I help? Like, is there something like that? You are giving me so many great ideas for our product team. <laughs> the, the Amy bracelet and the Kevin bracelet. I know. I'm just, I mean, Ava, I can't think of a male counterpart name, but I'm just thinking it might be a good idea for guys because it's like, I hate the fact that my patients become so obsessive over everything, the charting and the temping. And I tell everyone, put the damn darn, darn, YouTube, don't censor me. Um, put the thermometer down. So I love that about the Ava bracelet. One of the things I heard, and I want to make sure that like you dispel this rumor and myth, that the Ava bracelet will buzz you and like vibrate and it'll wake you up at night and then it'll make you really pissed off that you're wearing it. Is that is there really like such a thing like that? No, the Ava bracelet. Well, it does have this feature. It has a silent alarm that vibrates if you want to, you know, have an alarm that doesn't wake up your partner in bed. Um, but it doesn't. There's no other buzzing besides that. So why would so why would you want to have an alarm that it, like literally like it can, it can wake you up from sleep? Yeah, like if you ha or someone who uses an alarm clock and you want to have an alarm clock that doesn't wake. Let's say your husband sleeps like two hours later than you, Got like it. mine does. Well, I kind of enjoy you know? waking my husband up at five in the morning. It's kind of fun. I, I really do too, but I guess <laughs> I don't some know people that don't. I really want to be, have it be silent, but. Maybe. Then you can just put the bracelet while it's buzzing somewhere on his person and see what he thinks okay, of that. Now, I, I like you even more now. This is really <laughs> a, fun, a fun conversation that we're ha having. But like what other things does it track? We've talked a little bit about it, like skin temperature, pulse and all those things and sleep quality. How are those things important when you're tracking your ovulation and the quality of your sleep? Why does that matter? Um, yeah, well, I'll, t I'll talk about everything it tracks and yeah. how those kind of work together to identify yeah. the fertile window. So the, it, Ava tracks seven, seven different physiological parameters. Um, there's, let's see, I'm gonna, I hope I don't freak out and forget one, but okay. um, temperature, resting heart rate, breathing rate, okay. um, sleep, movement, um, perfusion, and oh my God, am I going to forget one? <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. I, for, I forgot one. There's seven. <laughs> They're all really great. <laughs> oh, heart, heart rate variability. Heart rate variability. Okay. That's what it is. Cool. Is there um, a GPS so, option too? <laughs> we do, no GPS. Okay. We don't. We're, we're not tracking your location. Okay. Um, but so so um, a lot of people. There's kind of like a debate um, among our users of, you know, are you supposed to look at each data point and anal uh, People who are used to using the temperature method, they're used to saying, oh, you know, I see my temperature rose, and there's these like rules of like three days in a row right. rises by this much. That's really not how you're supposed to use Ava. We use machine learning. We use a machine learning algorithm which um, takes all of all of these data points and puts them into. People describe it sometimes as a black box mm -hmm. um, because I mean, what that means is that the black box kind of learns based on lots and lots of data from cycles that we like how um, these seven parameters behaved in many many women um, are, who were ovulating. Um, in a way that even the people who sometimes created that algorithm don't necessarily understand. Mm -hmm. And that means that we can detect, the algorithm can detect patterns that indicate your fertile window is starting that aren't obvious to the naked eye. That said, we do see that, you know, heart rate increases during the fertile window, breathing rate increases also, but that doesn't mean that you can just look at it and, and know what's going on. It's designed to take that mental labor away from you. So, sure. Yeah. sure. I mean, does it tell you about your quality of sleep and how deep you were sleeping at the time in, in that given day? Yeah. You um, so you, you can see total sleep and then time spent um, in deep sleep and uh, light versus light and REM sleep combined. Very cool. And then do you guys sell data to like Amazon and Jeff Bezos? Absolutely not. The really nice thing about Ava is that since it's, you know, it's not cheap, it's three hundred dollars, and right. that means that our business model doesn't give us any incentive to sell your data because um, that's we have we have this hardware that we're selling. Got it. And then I, I heard about this really cool guarantee 
that if you wear it for like 30 years, you get your money back. <laughs> Yeah, if you wear it for 30 years and you don't get pregnant, no, just kidding. It's um, If you buy our Plus package okay. um, if, and you don't get pregnant within a year after wearing Ava consistently, um, we require you wear it, I think it's 80% of the time, okay. then we will give you your money back. And when you're saying 80%, you just mean like when you're going to sleep, right? It's not like you wear it every day, all day, no matter what you're doing. You have to wear it to work, and if your boss asks you, what's that bracelet, you say, it's my getting pregnant bracelet. <laughs> um, no, just kidding. You only wear it during sleep. It doesn't, um, it doesn't help to wear it during the day because we want to see what your um, physiological parameters are when you're um, not, they're not affected by your activities. Got it. So let's say you got pregnant and under the one-year mark, and you really wanted your money back. Could I, let's say, put it on my cat? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but don't do that. <laughs> I don't think any cat. I mean, that's a lot of work, and the cat would probably get pissed, and maybe like you know, it, some animal rights people would get really upset that you're doing that to the cat. That's definitely yeah, you can't get consent from a cat. To that's true, and consent's purpose. important. We yeah. want to treat animals fairly. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Okay, so what are some mistakes people make when trying to get pregnant? What have you like heard from your users that they're like, oh my God, I'm so glad I had that Ava bracelet. This is what I was doing wrong this whole time and this is how I changed my behavior. Yeah, I have a bunch of those. Um, I think. I think the biggest one that I see is using ovulation tests wrong, um, wrong in a lot of different ways. So, um, so this, let's go back to the six-day fertile window for a second. So you ovulate, um, you know, on this day, and then the five days before that, and the day of ovulation itself, are your fertile window. Mm -hmm. um, and so, a lot of people, I think, focus too much on the day of ovulation or maybe the day before. But what all of the big research studies that look at um, daily fecundability um, in the menstrual cycle, they find that. The best days are really the three days leading up to ovulation, right. and not even the day of ovulation itself. That's a, that's a good day, but there's actually a slightly higher risk of chemical pregnancy on the day of ovulation. Right. Not that you should avoid the day of ovulation. It's just that you're not. That's not your goal when you're trying to get pregnant. It's like, oh my god, ovulation day, ovulation day. And right. so when you use ovulation tests, and those give you usually around a 24-hour warning before you ovulate, that means that by the if you're waiting to have sex until you get a positive ovulation test your best days to get pregnant might already be behind you. Totally. Um, yeah, and so that's that's why Ava is designed to tell you when your fertile window begins because um, you want to kind of start having sex early and often in the fertile window. And, you know, three days before ovulation for some people might be better than ovulation day. Right, and I agree with that. I feel like people have this... Um they make this assumption that they have to like wait for it, wait for it, save up, save up, save up. And ovulation day is that, you know, whenever they see that positive is, big, is the big day. But I, gen I definitely guide my patients and tell them to have start having sex around three days before when they think that they're ovulating. Um, so that's a really good point. I'm glad you shared that um, with us. And what is late ovulation? Tell me about that. Yeah, so um, just because, um, you know, everyone tells you, oh, the menstrual cycle is 28 days and you ovulate on day 14 doesn't mean that will be true for you. Mm -hmm. um, also, even if you do have a 28-day menstrual cycle, that doesn't mean that um, that you'll ovulate at, uh, on day 14 right. of that cycle. You might ovulate on day 18 of that cycle. Right. Um, and the only way to really know this um, is to track something physiological about your body. You right. can't just track the, the, when your period comes because that doesn't tell you um, exactly when you ovulate. Um, and so that's what Ava is designed to do to see you know, where ovulation actually happens in the cycle. Um, you, you, know, you can also use cervical mucus or ovulation right. tests or temperature. Um, but uh, yeah, you can't just look at the dates of your period. That doesn't tell you when you're fertile. Right, and same with early ovulation. I mean, you might you make this assumption that you start having sex, let's say cycle day number 10, and that could be totally incorrect if you're ovulating day six or seven. I mean, there truly are people who can get pregnant when they're on their period. I mean, yeah. that, that can happen, and it just means they had sex on their period, and then they might have their fertile window was just in that zone. So it's just really important to understand that about your body. Um, Definitely, so I had I had late ovulation. I think what the cycle I got pregnant, I probably ovulated on day like twenty three or yeah. something. So. Yeah, and if you got tired of having sex day seventeen, you would have tapped out by then. <laughs> and it would have been like no way I never get tired going with this marathon. But yeah, so without the Ava bracelet, you wouldn't have known. So um, I imagine whether you had a boy or a girl, you named your baby Ava. Yeah, I have a boy, and his name is Ava. Ava. <laughs> I'm just kidding. His, his I name love it. <laughs> but we do we do have people who named their baby Ava. That's really sweet. I have two babies named Amy out there in the last 12 years. Please don't name your babies Amy, people. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> there have already been two. We're done with that. Yeah. I love it. This is so fun. Well, Lindsay, I have absolutely loved having you on tonight's show. Um, do you guys have any new developments coming up? 
for, you know, with your company that we should know about? Anything that we should be looking out for? Yeah, a couple things. We're working um, on a contraception uh, setting in the or It'll be a new app, same hardware um, for some time uh, in the near future. So look yeah, for that I mean, that soon. makes sense. I mean, if it tells you when to have sex, it can also tell you when not to have sex. Definitely. Right. Okay, cool. And also, I can imagine maybe for menopausal women looking at their sleep quality, their breathing, all that kind of stuff for, you know, they We're say also working that, on that doing yeah. deep breathing can really help women in menopause getting their um, how to avoid hot flashes. Yeah. <laughs> so Lindsay, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. I hope everyone has learned a ton from tonight's show. I hope you guys will tune in next week as well. Everyone have a great night. Thank you, Lindsay, for being on with us. Thanks so much for having Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 